The Zoom is on, by the way. We are recording. Yeah. That'd be fun. I like that. All right. I pay attention much to music. Okay. Uh, good morning, everybody. We are in Yavon Mustafa Lamed Ches. So the plan for the next today and tomorrow, at least, is to at least get slightly ahead. There will be no shear the first day of Yantif. I'm thinking about giving shear the second day of Yantif an hour before Mincha. Uh, we'll decide by tomorrow where, thank you so much, where and when that will be. Okay, so we are, again, Yavon Mustafa Lamed Ches, Aleph. We are about seven, seven lines down, the first word on the line is something, and that is where we're going to start today. Uh, we will get, God willing, to the Mishnah and Lama Tessa and Aleph. So we're going to go for a little while, but hopefully this will be quick and relatively straightforward. That's a long, that's a long one. And you uh, have faith in me. I, I do. Okay. It's on, right mute. It's on, mute. It's on mute. You're unmuted. You're unmuted. I'm mm. not muted. I hear you. Yeah, I hear you. Sorcerer's muted. All right, here we go. I, I hear you. I hear you just fine. Okay, good. Suffolk v'yavam shepo lachlog benichse saba. So you have a suffolk. So again, this is a child of the deceased person, and that deceased person's brother, meaning this kid's uncle, shepo lachlog benichse saba. So they are coming to divide up the assets of the deceased grandfather, who is definitely this kid's grandfather. The question is, we don't know who his father is. So Suffolk, Amar Hai Gavra Bar Misnahu. So the Suffolk, this kid says, well, the uh, Hai Gavra, meaning myself, this person, meaning me, I'm the son of this, of the, of the first husband. Upal Gadidihu. And half of that Yerusha comes to me through my father. Yavam Amar, but the Yavam says, you're my son, and you actually have nothing to do with any of this because I'm Yorish, my father. You are not Yorish, your grandfather, and therefore you get nothing. So in this case, the Yavam is Vadai because he's definitely the son of the Saba, the Safek, Safek, and this kid is, it's a Safek whether. He is the Yavam's son or the first husband's son. And a suffix, a case of doubt, does not take away from a case where we have certainties. Now, next case. So now you have the suffix and people who are either his first cousins or his half brothers or full brothers, uh, at, at the very least half brothers through the father, they are coming to divide up. The nechasim of the grandfather. Something. Amar who gavra bar misna who upaga didihu. Same argument as before. He said, "Listen, the guy who died, he's my father. Therefore, I get his portion. That's half." Uvene yavam amri achunaat. They're like, "No, no, 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 no. You're our brother." Uminasa islach islach bahadan, and you get a piece just like we do. Palga de kamude lehu shakli. So now the half, the kamude lehu. So the half that he that the that this kid acknowledges to them, they have, they get. Tilta, the Kamodule, and the one third, let's say there are two of them and one of him. So the three brothers, they, so that means they agree that he gets a third shuckle. So he gets to take that. Pashlahu, Danka. So then what's left is a, a one sixth piece of the total pie. And because there's doubt about that piece of it, they divide up that final one sixth. Now, fin uh, final two cases, Saba v'yavam v'nichse safek. What happens if, if it's the grandfather and the yavam who are dividing up the nechassim of this kid who had passed away? And the issue is that the grandfather would want to, is gonna claim that his deceased son is the deceased grandson's father and therefore he is Yorish. And the Yavam is going to claim that it's his own son. And therefore, he is Yorish. O, or the other case, Saba v'safek v'nichse Yavam. Or it's the grandfather and the grandson who are dividing up the nechassim of the Yavam. In that case, the grandfather is going to claim that, uh, that, he's, he, the that he's the nephew. Correct. Um, and the Yavam is going to claim, the, this kid is going to claim that he's the son. So having mammon and the suffix, the Once again, a case of uh, of mammon that sits in a case of doubt, 
and therefore they divide. Okay, on to the Mishnah. So the, the rest of our entire sugya today is going to be figuring out exactly what is this case of Shomeris Yavim Shanaflola Nechasim. That a woman who is a Shomeris Yavim, her husband died, her brother in law has yet to, uh, to do Yibum. So she is in this limbo state of Shomeris Yavim. She's waiting for him. So Beishamay and Beishelel both agree that she can sell and give away any of her own property that she brought into her marriage, Vikayim, and anything that she does stays, meaning that the, the, those sales and those gifts are final. Mesa, now, what happens if during this time where she's a Shomeris Yavam, she was widowed from her first husband, she's been waiting to do Yivam, with a brother-in-law, so now what happens to her ksuva, which is a part of the nechasim of the first husband, and what happens to nechasim and nechasim yosimima? Those are the the property that she brings to the marriage from her own father's house that she gets to take with her in the event of death or divorce. Now beishamay omrim yachloku nor shehavali nor shehaav. So according to Beishamai, in the case where she passes away, she then has to divide the property. And we'll see a little bit later exactly which property we're talking about uh, between the inheritors of her first husband and the inheritor and her father's family. Beis Hillel says that these nechassim, this property stays where it originally was, ksuva becheskas yorshe habal, the ksuva, the dollars for the ksuva stay with the inheritors of her first husband, and and the property that she brought with her from her father's house stays with the uh, the inheritors of her father's household. Kenasa, harehi ke ishto lechal davar. Now, once the Yavam marries her, she is considered his wife in all matters. And uh, the Gemara will ask later what exactly that means. However, the one condition is that the, the, the money in her ksuva uh, st- comes from the first husband, not from the second husband. And the Gemara toward the end of our limu today will explain why. Okay, now in our Mishnah, we had one case where Beishamai and Beis Hillel agreed, and we had another in which they disagreed. And this is the beginning of our sugi to try and figure out exactly what case are we talking about here of Shomer Yavam. My shana ratio de lo pligi, my shana save the pligi. What is the difference between the ratio where Beishamai and Beis Hillel agree and the sefer where they do not? Amar Ula, Ula says, ratio de nafla kishiyi arusa. Ula says that in the that in the ratio of the Mishnah where Beishamai and Beis Hillel agree, she was only an arusa to the husband who passed away. They were never fully married. The seifa denafla kishin nesua, and the seifa where there is a machlok is Beis Hillel Beishamai, where Beishamai says yachloku and Beis Hillel says that everything stands a becheskasa. That's in a case where she and her, as she and her first husband. First husband were fully married when she fell to the Yavim. For Arusa, there's no you know, for Arusa. There you, is you to somebody and your husband, your fiance there is died, some there's some level of Zika yeah, there. Yeah. I'm saying, is there you, you know, we're gonna we're gonna see a little bit of exactly how strong is that connection. You would think not because the Torah says be glad angle and of course you don't that when they were married. So True, think that but there is still some level of issues, right? She's ushered other people. Uh, if if she's uh, she can't marry a Kohen, right? You need to get. Like, it's not so simple, right? So there's some level of Zika, and some of the blot that we just got through was a whole discussion right, of. We had, this, we had that same question. Yes, Zika. I know, but but loved off in a case of marriage. <laughs> <Take it. laughs> The Kasavar Ula, a last second, a last last line, and Ula holds Zikas Arusa, Osa Safek Arusa. That the Zika of an Arusa creates a case of Safek Arusa, 
and uh, top of uh, La base, and Zikas Nesua Osa Suffolk Nesua. And the Gemara now is going to explain exactly what that means. Zikas Arusa Osa Suffolk Arusa. How do we know that a case of Zika? So again, you have a woman who's engaged to be married to a man who passes away. So that Zika Sarusa puts her in a status of Suffolk Arusa, the Vada Arusa, because if you would think that, sh- that her status is of a Vada Arusa, would Beis Hillel ever agree that she has full rights to her own property? Definitely not. That if uh, we saw in a Mishnah, a uh, Mishnah in Ksubis, that if uh, Nechasim fell to her from her father's house when she was already in Arusa, a Vadai Arusa, Beishamai Omrim Timkor. Beishamai says that Lechadchila, she can still sell that property and she has the rights to it. Beishilal Omrim Lo Timkor. Beishilal says Lechadchila, she's not allowed to sell. And Eluv Elu Modim, now Beis Shammai and Beis Hillel both agree, Shemachem and Asna Kayim, that Bidi Eved, if she already went and sold it, even according to Beis Hillel, those sales are final. Ela Shmami Na, it must be that Zika Sarusa owes a Suffolk Arusa, that it only creates a Suffolk, which is why even Beis Hillel agrees that she is allowed Milachat Chila to sell or give away her uh, Nechasim. Now, the second uh, part of Ula's limud was that as that uh, a, a what a, does the mean exactly? Zika, what? So I, I understand the Gemara. I understand so that Zika so. refers to a is a is a connection, I, I, right? No, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what does it mean? So if if Ruvain is does Arusin with right. Leia, Leia, yeah, and then Ruvain dies, right? The question is, how strong is that Zika? Yeah. For the, for the Arusa Leia, meaning how strong is it? So according to Beis Shammai and Beis Hillel, it's not very strong because all it creates is a Suffolk Arusa. And ain't Suffolk Motsi Mi Devadai, so she's allowed her own Nechaz. Is it that thing that vis-a-vis the Yavam? Or just yes, the, vis-a-vis okay. the Yavam. Yavam. Okay. Now the Gemara later on this Amud is going to ask, well, why are we talking about when she dies? Talk about her payros now. Yeah, yeah. That makes more sense. Yeah, yeah, so we're going to get to that. So now, Zikas Nesua, so now they're fully married and she's a Shomeres Yavam. Right. How strong is that Zika? Oh, it's a Suffolk Nesua. So now we say, Ula says that that creates a, a status in this Shomeres Yavam of a Suffolk Nesua. The Isakadaitach Vadai Nesua, because if you would say that, that she is 100%, um, that it gives her a status of being fully married to the Yavam. <clears throat> How would Beis Shammai say that the, the, Yorshim, the Yorshim of the husband have to split it with the Yorshim of the father? Mm-hmm. The husband has full rights. So how could Beis Shammai say Yachloku? Beis Shammai wouldn't be able to say that anybody's cholek the, the family of the husband would get it because she would be a vada nesua. So rather, within the shita of Ula, and Rabbi Feifel, in, the, in a moment for Rabbi, we're going to get to your question. So now we see that according to Ula, that if she is fully married and becomes a Shomeres Yavon, she has the status of a Suffolk Nesua. Now, Isn't that obvious because he can do Chalitza when he's married. We don't know if he's going to do Chalitza or Yavon. And she's waiting could be able to chalitza, therefore never be married. So therefore, he won't have any rights. To right, but the fact that, but we learned the fact that he can do chalitza means he can also do yibum. So there is that zikas yavum. The question is, how strong is it when he before he does it? Amen. Okay, so we're rocking and rolling. So we're about 10, 12 lines down. I'm gonna lay So now Rabbah says back to Ula. You're busy creating cases where uh, she died and it's after she passes away. Why are we dealing with a case where she's very much alive? Why isn't the machlokes who has the rights to the prophets on her nechasim? Ella Amaraba, so so he disagrees with Ula's approach. Rabba says, 
So both the Resha of the Mishnah and the Sefer of the Mishnah are talking about when she becomes a Shomeres Yavam, after she is, was fully married to the first husband. Vizikas Nesua, Osas Suffolk Nesua. And Zikas Nesua creates a case where before the Yavam can, can do Yibum, she has a status of Suffolk Nesua. Resha de Ihi Kayama. So now, the Resha of the Mishnah, where she is very much alive, Havala Ihi Vadai, the Inu Suffolk. So she's Vadai, the the family of the uh, first husband of the of the <clears throat> Yavam is a Sapeg Ben Savi, most of the Vadai. So why should this so why should her future Yavam, her current brother in law, have any rights to her at all? Seifa de Mesa. But the Seifa is talking about a case where uh, hold on, I think I skipped a line. Oh, Seifa de Mesa, Halalubai and Lirish, Halalubai and Lirish. So now when she passes away, both the Yorshim of her father's household mm -hmm. and the Yorshim of the husband, they want a piece of the pie. Mm -hmm. So there, so then, according to Rabba, that's why it's a case of the Yachlub, because they both at least have some, they have, thank you, that's the word I was searching for, they have some claim to her, um, her property. So going back to Alan's question, according to Rabbah, does the Arusa have any have any zika to the Yavam? So it's a good question. I don't know because okay. Rabbah says that Rabbah would hold that, that none of this is talking about an Arusa. It's all within the case of a Nesua. Right, right, exactly. So I, so it's a good question. I don't know. The Tosfa, sorry. You can do the Tosfa on your own. Okay. <laughs> no 24. Okay, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I got a real good one. Now, Abaye, uh, <laughs> me too. Okay. Uh, so Abaye now asks on Rabba, Ulave Shamai, ain't something mostly me vadai. Now, so Abaye wants to know how can you even say any of that within the opinion of Beishamai? Does Beishamai hold that in the case of that a suffix cannot be motzi? From the case of Vada, we have a proof that is exact that says exactly the opposite. But it's not a mission of Baba Basra. So if a house falls on a guy and on his father, or a house Allah al Morishov, or it falls on him and the people that he was Yoresh from, the how you Allah, and on this guy who passed away, along with his either his father or others that he was inheriting. So he, he, this guy owed some money. So your Shehaav Omrim Haben Meis Rishon Ve'achakach Meis Haav. So the Yorshim of the father will say, well, the son died first, which meant that the father who was about to die second immediately inherited all the property of the son, and therefore they get it all through the power of the Yerusha of their father. Ubalechov the Balchov says. Exactly the opposite. Ha'av meis rishon, which meant that before the son died, a moment later, he inherited everything of the fathers. And therefore, they have a claim on the nechassim of the balchov. And Beishamai omrim yachloku. Beishamai says, well, in that case, the yorshim of both the father and the son have to split it. omrim nechassim Within the opinion of Beishamai, is very, very clear. He said, Yachloku, in a case where clearly it's a suffix, and we'll never know who died first, the father or the son. Mm -hmm. So the Gemara answers, so you don't say that this is a case of suffix Mosimide Vada within the opinion of Beishamai. Why? Because Kasavri Beishamai, Shtar Haomid Lagabos, Kegabui Dami, that with Shtar, that is uh, waiting to be claimed. It's as if it's already been claimed. It gives us its, it gives it a status of vadai. So you can't say that's a case of beishamai not holding that a suffix doesn't take from a vadai. They're saying it is based on a different standard with the power of this shtar. Umana timra. So now the Gemara wants to know. Well, how do we know that beishamai holds that a shtar haomid lagabos kagabui dami? It's not. We have a Mishnah that says the following. So if we have women who are suspected of being unfaithful and their husbands passed away before they could be taken to the base of Mikdash 
to drink the mesota. Beishamai omrim notelos ksubas on veino chosos. Beishamai holds, well, they get their ksuba anyway, and they don't have to drink. If they don't drink, they get nothing. Asks the Gemara Oshosos, what do you mean that they have to drink? The Torah says the husband has to bring her to the base of Mikdash, and he's not around anymore. Right, because we know that, that, it's, that if she's proven innocent, major bracha, right? It's a major bracha for that family, which is strange. Which is strange, but uh, okay. Well, well, we'll get there. We'll get there. Soon. We're getting, we're getting there. Ella, Ella, mitoch shaloshosos lo not los ksubas. And so Hillel, much more machmer than Beishamai. Hillel says, listen, since they weren't able to drink, they are ver- therefore um, ineligible to collect on their ksuba. The hahacha. Once again, we see the safeku. This is a suffix zanai, suffix lo zanai. It's a suffix whether she was mezana with another man or not. And according to Beishamai, once again, we see that you have a case of suffix, the woman, she is collecting a ksuba from the husband's family. So therefore, we see that it must be, according to Beishamai, that they hold that a star, a valid star, that is waiting to be claimed, it is if it is already claimed and has the status of Adai. Now, so, so that's the end of that piece. Another Gemara wants to know the Abaye los Meha. But why didn't Abaye ask from this case on Beishamai to prove that Safek Motsimi de Vadai? So answers the Gemara Ksuvas Isha Shiny Mishum Maybe if the Ksuva of a woman is different because we want husbands and wives to get along. We especially want the wife to be important in the husband's eyes. And therefore we're extra machmir by a ksuba, which is why Abai couldn't bring a kasha and something motzumidei vadai against Beishamai from that case. It's nothing more so of philosophy ksuba hamidamas nisim. But what about asking from our own Mishnah? The Mishnah on Lamed Chesum and Aleph said um, that, uh, that Beishamai claimed Yachloku, in a case of when we ask what happens to her ksuba. So answers the Gemara. Uh, ba, 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 I, of course, lost the place. A little pleggy. Gemara says, well, but they weren't arguing about ksuba. Gemara says, below? What are you talking about? V'haktani, mesa, maya, seb, ksuba, suba, nechazam, hanichnasam, v'yotzi, nima. We ask specifically what happens with her ksuba and with her, with the nechazam that she brings with her. And takes and brings with her into the marriage and takes with her from the marriage. And in that case, we had this whole discussion. What are you talking about? They didn't argue over it. So the Gemara says, This is what is really going on in the Mishnah. The Mishnah asked, So the Mishnah asked about her ksuva, but never answered that precise question. But the Mishnah did deal with the Nechasim that she brought from her father's household. Beishamai says that they're cholek on those Yorshim, on, excuse me, they're cholek on those Nechasim between the Yorshim of the husband and the Yorshim of the father. And Beis Hillel said, no, they really need to stay where they are with the family of the father. Now, Amar Ravashi, we are three lines from the bottom. On the Mechesim base, Masnis and Namideka, the Mishnah uh, can is really uh, has a little bit of precision on this point to prove that we're re- that the Mishnah and the Machlokas Beis Shammai and Beis Hilla was really only about the Nechasim that she brought into the marriage and not the dollar value of the Ksuba. Diktani Yachloku Yorshe Baal. In your Ha'av, because the Mishnah says, again, within the opinion, this is all in Beishamai, that the Yorshim of the husband uh, get to inherit with the Yorshim of the father. The Lokitani Yorshe Ha'av in your Ha'ba. But it doesn't say that the Yorshim of the father's family get to take the assets of the husband's family, which is the Ksuba, Shmamina. So it must be just like the Gemara is explaining now, 
that Beis Shammai and Beis Hillel do not argue in our Mishnah on the Ksuba. They only argue on the Yorshim that the woman brought into the marriage. Abaye Amar, now Abaye has a totally different approach to this Mishnah. Abaye says, Resha b'naflulah kishi shomer siyavo. That the Resha of the Mishnah, again, the Mishnah that we had on Lamed Chesim Adal, is talking about when the Yorshim of her father's household fell to her when she was in a Shomeris Yavam, meaning she was widowed and waiting for the brother-in-law to marry her. Seifa de kishi tacht of the Baal. But the Seifa is talking about a case where the, her own father's assets fell to her when she was fully married to the husband. The Kasavar, top of Lamatesa with Aleph, the Kasavar Abaye, Yadu Kiyada. And Abaye holds that in that case, once she's full, page. once she's, what was that? Turn the page. It's a bad joke that goes on here. Yeah, I know. Really bad. Really, really bad. bad. It's like a Bob, it's like a Bob Seeger song. It's like he's try, he's trying to awesome. prove that they're following along. Abaye says, Yadu Kiyada. So Abaye says that, that once they're married, Anything she brings into the household, the husband gets a piece of the action. So Rava says, if you're telling me that the Seifa of the Mishnah is referring to when the assets of her father's household felt her when she was fully married, everybody argues that the husband has the upper hand. Ela Idi Vidi. But rather, says Rava, that both the Resha and the Seifa of our Mishnah, the Naflula Keshishumers Yavam, Resha de Lo Avad Bamamar, Seifa de Avad Bamamar. Okay, so we're both talking about where she's a Shomers Yavam when she comes into some money from her father's household. And the Resha is talking about where the Yavam did not do Mimer. So it's the weakest potential uh, level of Zika. That's right. And the Seifa is when he did Mimer, which is. Uh, an amira, it's some level of kedushin, as we've seen before, uh, between the yavam and the yavama. The kasava rava, maimer lebe shamai osa vadai arusa. And rava says that maimer, within the opinion of be shamai, makes her avadai arusa, which is a much stronger level of zika than we said before. The suffik nesua. How does that work? Vadai arusa litchos betzara. She's enough of an arusa that her tsara, her co wife, gets to go free, meaning because she is on some level redeemed by the other. That's correct. She gets to go. The suffix nesua, lachlok bin achasim. And she is enough of a nesua that her new husband's family, if the, if the Yavim were to pass away, gets a claim on half of her assets. Itmar mishmei rabbi Elazar kavasi de rabba. Itmar mishmei de rabbi Yossi be rabbi Hanina kavasi de rabbi. Now, so we've said, or we could say, in the name that Rabbi Lazar has an opinion that aligns in the accordance with the opinion of Rava right here, and uh, and that uh, that we say in the name of Rabbi Yosi, Rabbi Hanina, like the opinion of Abaye. So again, just quickly, Abaye says that 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 everything fell to her when she was a, a Shomeris Yavam. That's the Reisha and the Seifa when she was when she was fully married to the husband. And according to Rava, that's not possible because then the husband would have the upper hand. But rather. They're both when she's a Shomeris Yavam, and the only difference between the Resha and the, Se- Resha and the Seifa is whether the Yavam performed Mimer or not. So asks the Gemara, Umi Amar Rabbi Elazar Hachi, did Rabbi Elazar really align with the opinion of Rava, the Hamar Rabbi Elazar, Mimer Lebe Shama Enokon Ela Lidchos Bitzara Bilvad, that it only goes as far as freeing the Tsara, but it's not strong enough to create a Suffolk Nisuin where. The, the, those assets would end up being divided between the husband's family and her father's family. And Gemara says, okay, right, we got the opinions reversed. It really must be that Rabbi Yosef Rabbi Hanina aligns with Rava and Rabbi Elazar aligns with Abaye. Ay, so the Ibai same of the Gemara says, you could also say that really don't switch the opinions and they are as the Gemara originally said it. Amr lecha Rabbi Elazar, because Rabbi Elazar could say to you, ki amri ana dolosagi la beget, but when I said that she, um, that it's not enough for her to have a get, but she also needs chalitza. But 
to, that to force division of assets that the incoming, that the second husband had nothing to do with, whoever, whoever said anything about that? I was never talking about those assets to begin with. Um, Rav Papa, Rav Papa says that you can derive from our Mishnah most closely with the opinion of Abaye, even though we asked before, why are you dealing with a case where she died? Let her stay alive and ask about the Peros. But Rav Papa says that even with that question, the, the Mishnah aligns most closely with the opinion of Abaye, once again, who said that the Resha is that it refers to the case when her father's assets were, came to her when she was Shemeris Yavam, and the Seifa when she was fully married to the husband. Nikatani, Nechasim, Nechasim Anichnasim, Viyotsim Ima, because the Mishnah referred to Nechasim that, that came into the marriage and leave the marriage with her. My Nechnasim, Umay Yotsim, what does that mean? Lav Nechnasim, the Rishu Sabal, Viyotsim Rishu Sabal, is it not so? that they come into the reshus of the husband once they're married. And once that marriage ends, they leave the reshus of the Baal and they go to reshus ha'av. And they go to the reshus of the father, which is how, according to Abaye, Beishama and Beishel can, can argue over who has the rights to those assets. And that's the... And, and, and uh, he says that this diuk is so strong that even though we have this kasha of why are you why are you dealing with a case where she passed away, instead you should dealing with a case where she's alive and deal with the peros. Vesulo midi. The gemara says this is so strong. I don't want to hear another word about it. Okay, a drop more. We're going to get to the mishnah. Kenasa harehi. So we said in the mishnah that once they're fur- that once the yibum is completed and they're married. We say that they are married, fully married. So that's sort of obvious. So what halacha is the Gemara referring to? That he could divorce her with a get if he wants, because they're fully married. And if he so chooses, under the right conditions, he can he can remarry her. Of course, they're married. So why, what's the Kiddush there? So the Pasuk says that he has to take her for a wife and be and be her That's what the Torah said. And in beget lo. So you might think that because the Pasuk was worded that way, that even though they're fully married, she still has a status and a situation of yibum, and it's not considered a standalone marriage, and therefore she would need chalitza and not a get. Kamash Malan. That's that. That's not the case. So now the Mishnah also said not zero. What's that? We didn't know this is in the Kiddush. I mean, we didn't know that. You don't control it after they actually do evil. It seems to be like something new here. Uh, uh, yeah, I guess so. I mean, or or maybe it's, it's that you would need also. Right, it's the how I mean. I guess you would also. Maybe you would think you would also need chalitza or only need yeah. chalitza. But once they once the yavam and the yavama are do their thing. The whole yibum thing goes out the window. I think that's the chiddush of the of this mission. Machzira, pshita. Of course, they could take her back again. So k'tayta chamina that mitzvah de Rami Rachmana Aleha Avda. That remember, you're dealing with Eishasach. So once the Torah allows you to do that and you did it once, fine. But hashda take him alebe isra Eishasach. But if he divorces her, then maybe the maybe the Eishasach uh, snaps back. Maybe it snaps back. Kamash Malan, not true. I have aim hachinami. Well, so maybe we do. Maybe we are no heg the the isurim of eishasach after he divorces the yavama. Amra kra ulakacha lo leisha kevin shalakha harehi ki ishto lechal davar. So Misha says no that 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 the entire um, yibum calculus is out the window once they are married and. Uh, he is allowed to take her back. A couple more lines of Subasa. So we said in the Mishnah that she collects the Ksuva from the first husband. Why? My Taima. Isha Hiknulomina Shamaye. Because this Yavama, Hakarish Baruchu, made them get married. He didn't want it. She didn't want it. But they had to get married. Now, what happens if the first husband was poor and there's no, there are no assets to her to collect Ksuva? Takinu Lomisheni. Chazal. We're misaking that the second husband, the Yavam, 
would have to write her a ksuba, kala v'hotzia, so that it wouldn't be so easy for her, uh, for him to divorce her. Okay, so we will continue tomorrow on Lamed Tess, Lamed Aleph at the Mishnah, and we're going to get, after, immediately after the Siyum, and we're going to get, God willing, hopefully to the Mishnah at the bottom of Mem Amad Aleph in Mir Tashem. So a long haul tomorrow, we'll do it as quickly as we can. Ozzy, I'm bringing...